During an intense period of rivalry between the West and the Soviet Union, the project directly competed with the Concorde, achieving some notable records. The Tupolev Tu-144 was the world's first supersonic passenger plane. Its first flight took place in December of 1968, just two months before the first flight of the Concorde, its main competitor, and it was the first to enter service in 1975. Sixteen of these planes were manufactured, but only 102 commercial flights were made, of which only 55 carried passengers at supersonic speeds in the Soviet Union. Reliability and development issues, along with the repercussions of the two, 144 crash at the 1973 Paris Air Show and rising fuel prices limited the viability of the Tu-144 for regular use to just four. And it's the story we're going to see in a new video from the world of aviation's Aeropedia. Given the enormous size of the Soviet Union, supersonic travel was considered economically viable, especially for government employees traveling between Moscow and Siberian cities. Flying was the only practical alternative to week-long train journeys, and supersonic transport could significantly reduce these travel times. Initial estimates suggest that 20 of these supersonic planes would be sufficient for Aeroflot's national and international needs. The design of the Tu-144 began in 63, and in 65 it was presented in the form of a model at the Le Bourget Air Show in Paris, France, where six years earlier the model of the Concord project had been presented. I know comparisons are odious, but it's impossible to tell the story without its western rival. Given the geopolitical climate during the Cold War period, the Soviet Union intended to not only match but surpass Western advances, particularly in aerospace technology. While the idea of supersonic passenger planes was controversial in the West due to concerns about noise and environmental pollution, the Soviet Union planned to continue with its development, largely for its long routes across Siberia and Central Asia. With ample airspace, flight corridors would likely avoid urbanized areas. The plan envisaged the construction of five prototypes in four years, and the first plane would be ready in 1966, despite the similarity in appearance of the Tu-144. With the Anglo-French supersonic plane, which earned it the nickname of Konkordowski, there were significant differences between these two planes. The Tu-144 is larger and even a bit faster, but it had less modern avionics. While both the Concorde and the prototype of the Tu-144 had ogival delta wings, the wing of the Soviet plane lacked the Concorde's conical curvature. The production planes replaced this wing with a double delta wing, and previously a MiG-21 had been used for tests of this type of wings, and that plane can be seen at the Monino Museum near Moscow. Another major distinction were the two small retractable surfaces called whisker canards with fixed double slot leading edge slats and retractable flaps to increase lift at lower speeds. It's that moving the elevons down in an Allen Delta plane greatly increases lift but also tilts the nose down. The canards cancel out this nose down moment, thus reducing the landing speed to about 330 km per hour, which is already a high speed for landing. As we had said, it became the first commercial airplane in history to reach speeds of Mach 1 and Mach 2, ahead of the Concorde in both cases. The first mass-produced airplane flew in April 1973. The first test design did not have front canard type depth rudders. In it, the engines were installed closer together under the central fuselage and the landing gear was stored under the main wings, similarly to the design of the United States Bayer B-58 Hustler bomber, but the later mass production designs installed the new landing gear under the engines after several wind tunnel design tests. The Tu-134 and Tu-144 were among the final commercial aircraft equipped with braking parachutes. It was not equipped with any thrust reversal capability, so the parachute was used as the only alternative. 
The aircraft was engineered for a 30,000 hour lifespan over 15 years. The heating of the fuselage and the high temperature properties of the primary structural materials, which were aluminum alloys, set the maximum speed at Mach 2.2. 15% of the weight of this aircraft was due to the titanium used. There were then two more versions, one called 2144S, of which nine units were produced, and it is equipped with the Kuznetsov turbofan. NK144A to solve the lack of thrust from takeoffs with his previous Koleshov RE36 engines. The other variant was the 2144-500 of which five were produced, powered by the more powerful Kolosov R-536-51 engine, where the range with full payload increased to 5,330 kilometers. Although for comparison, the Concorde had a range of almost 6,500 kilometers. The plane was assembled with machined parts from large blocks and panels, many of them measuring more than 19 meters long. While at that time this approach was announced as an advanced feature of the design, it turned out that the large and machined parts had many defects in the alloy structure that caused cracks at stress levels lower than those that the part could withstand. In 1976, during static and repeated load tests, the structure of one of these planes cracked at 70% of the designed flight stress. According to experts, something similar happened to the plane that crashed in 1973 at the air show after a maneuver that exceeded the limits. The air after a maneuver that exceeded the limits. I insist that comparisons are odious, but I want to emphasize the test hours when it obtains certification for passenger flights, which makes it the most tested plane, and the 2144 recorded 1509 hours before its state acceptance. The introduction of the Tupolev 144 into passenger service was scheduled for the 60th anniversary of the Communist Revolution. The first passenger services between Moscow and Almaty in Kazakhstan began on November 1st, 1977. Aeroflot's cargo service began on June 23rd, 79, using the new variant of new engines that gave it greater flight autonomy and new engines that gave it greater flight autonomy and range. But these cargo flights did not last for long. The first flights in regular service indicated that the 2144S was extremely unreliable. One problem for passengers was the extremely high level of noise inside the cabin, which reached an average of at least 90 to 95 decibels. The noise came from the engines, which unlike the Concorde, could only maintain supersonic speeds by continuously using afterburners. Passengers sitting next to each other could barely hold a conversation, and those sitting two seats away couldn't even hear each other, even if they were shouting. And a curiosity that was often mentioned was that to communicate, they would pass handwritten notes because they couldn't hear each other. And that's not all. Also, those who have traveled on this aircraft comment that the noise in the back of the plane was unbearable. The passenger service was a semi-scheduled service until the first Tupolev 144-500 experienced an in-flight failure during a pre-delivery test, making a forced landing on May 23rd, 78, with two crew members who died. The 55th and last regular passenger flight took place on June 1st, 1978. The Konkorsky, as it began to be known in the West, was not profitable from the point of view of fuel consumption, which limited its route to connecting Moscow and Kazakhstan. 
Aeroflot continued operating the Tu-144-500 after the end of the official service, with some non-regular flights in the 80s. It was the design of a supersonic commercial airplane. It had a maximum takeoff weight of 207 tons and had a range of 6,500 kilometers. Its maximum speed was 2,500 km per hour, or Mech 2.15, and it had a capacity of 150 passengers, 11 in first class and 139 in tourist class. Years later, in 1994, an agreement was signed in Vancouver, in which National Aeronautics and Space Administration modified a 144-500, developing a set of the modified plane, called 2144LL. This 96th, the first flight of the modified plane, called 2144LL, was carried out. This program lasted until 1999. It was cancelled. The aircraft's high production and development costs and specialized nature limited its production quantity. 16 units were manufactured plus one more unfinished, and its sale to other countries or airlines was not achieved. Additionally, because it could not fly non-stop from Europe to America, its flights were limited within the territory of the Soviet Union. In 1983, the abandonment of this aircraft was announced, claiming that it was too expensive to justify its use, even though it was a great achievement in technology for the Soviets and helped to develop other aircraft like supersonic bombers. I'm Marcos and this is the Aeropedia of Aviation World, I hope you liked the video.